there's a little note in here that said that you added the language to ensure longitudinal joints for the riding surface is not placed in the wheel path. And is that high, high, that's highlighted, is that correct? That's correct. In the markup version, it's highlighted, you know, based off the forensics that we've done. Yes. Every time we put a longitudinal joint in the, in the wheel path, we see a failure, failure. right? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to basically say, and this also goes for TxDOT, mm -hmm. let's not put the longitudinal joint in the mm -hmm. wheel path. And you know, from a pavement evaluator standpoint, you know, I do pavement evaluations for the Quality Awards program, uh, as well as uh, a lot of people in the state, but I, I just cannot, I cannot award a project that has the, the wheel path. Uh, if your joint's in the wheel path, it's, it's not moving on to the second round. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you addressed it in the specification. Mm -hmm. And so that way uh, we, won't even, we won't even nominate projects that have you know, that, that, that join in the wheel path. To me, mm -hmm. that, just, that just tears me up when I see that. Because mm -hmm. it's pre-planning. You gotta plan those joints and you gotta plan them out. So I'm glad okay. that you put it in the specification. That's correct. Uh, table 14, so we have table 14, which is talking about thicknesses. Right. And then I know that we've had some changes. We had a special provision that actually changed this originally. That's right, that's correct. And, but that's now right. it's part of the spec. So let's that's, go through those, those, right. those thicknesses. So the first thing that we did is we deleted super pay A mixtures. Uh, the second thing that we did is we increased the thickness, the minimum thickness of the super pay B mixtures, realizing that the thicker we get, the easier it is to compact. So that increase was from two and a quarter inches thick up to 2.5. Uh, in addition, in terms of the super paved C, uh, I believe we kept that the same that we currently have in a special provision in terms mm -hmm. of minimum thickness. Which is? Uh, which is two inches. Two inches, so that's real important. There, I've seen a lot of plans where we had an inch and a half C mm -hmm. super paved and it's it's really tough to get to get our to, to required get densities. Right. So we require it now. The minimum is two inches, and that the was minimum. done by special provision. That's right. So uh, we need to make sure that that's uh, that's identified. That's correct, and that's in the new spec. Mm -hmm. And then another change that occurred was on super paved C mixes. Uh, in the special provision, we proposed one and a half inches thick for the minimum uh, untrimmed core height. We now in the new specification will have that as an inch and a quarter. Okay. Moving forward. And what was the reason for that? Is it just the idea, being more consistent? The idea for that was uh, to be more consistent and it was also uh, to make those cores eligible for testing. Okay. So, because we realized that, you know, sometimes like you mentioned, districts will use a super paved C at an inch and a half. And so if the inch and a half is what you specify, yeah. it's going to be challenging to get that core height to be able to use for uh, pay factors. Right. All right. So um, coming into the uh, next item here, mm -hmm. we're talking about placing mixtures only when weather condition and moisture conditions of the roadway surface are suitable and determined by the engineer. That was a note that was added that the engineer can make that determination mm -hmm. and not just that table of, of temperatures. That's correct. So what we've done is, is we're referring to when using a thermal imaging system. Mm -hmm. So, in the former specification, the verbiage read, you may pave any time the roadway is dry and the roadway surface temperature is at least 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We realize that uh, even though that's stated in the specification, that is not a be good idea. Best practice, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, moving forward, what we did is we actually added a table for minimum place, uh, pavement surface temperatures for placement for the thermal imaging system. And so if you look at this table, it now also includes the use, so we actually also changed uh, the verbiage that we used. Mm -hmm. uh, before we used what we called originally specified uh, temperature, if you will. Uh, what we did now is we said, okay, we're gonna look at the high temperature binder grade because that's what's important when it comes to being able to place the mixture. And so now if you look at the new table, if you will, what we've done is, is we've said, okay, for PG-64, here's your minimum temperatures, surface temperatures. If you look, for example, for a PG-64, if, the, if it's subsurface layer or nighttime paving operations, the minimum temperature is 35 degrees, very similar to the 32 that was in the specification, right? Where you see some change is when we start talking about the PG-70 and the PG-76, you'll see that we for subsurface layers and nighttime paving operations, we increased that temperature up to 45, but we did footnote it 
As we talked about before, the idea of compaction aids that we mm -hmm. defined in the specification, you can see that we allow a temperature decrease of 10 degrees Fahrenheit when more mix or a compaction aid is used in the mixture. The idea behind that change is, is that if warm mix or a compaction aid is used, you can drop it down to 35 degrees, which is very similar to what we previously had in specification. Right. Which is still not a good idea on most mixes. That's right. So uh, we, that's right. And that was part of the change, you know, as we, we wanted to recognize that just because it's in the specification doesn't necessarily mean it's the best practice. Right. So are you, are you giving any more leeway to using the IR bar versus the camera, or has that been taken out? So what we've done in terms of the camera is, is so that's the next section that mm -hmm. we'll discuss. We did have verbiage basically saying when using a thermal camera in lieu of the thermal imaging system, mm -hmm. the idea behind that verbiage was to start putting more emphasis right. on I'm either using the thermal imaging system or I'm using the camera. And if I'm using the camera, I have to do this. And so one of the things that you'll see differently between the thermal imaging system and the camera is, is that the temperature requirements are higher in terms of being able to place the mixture. In addition to that, what we've said under footnote, under footnote two mm -hmm. in table 15B mm -hmm. is we said basically utilizing a paving process with equipment that eliminates thermal segregation. In such cases, for each sublot and in the presence of the engineer, so we want the engineer to start witnessing when we're using the, right, the these thermal tools. cameras, use a handheld thermal camera in accordance with text 244 to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the engineer that the uncompacted mat has no more than 10 degrees Fahrenheit of thermal segregation. So we're putting some emphasis now, more emphasis in the specification of when the thermal camera is used, you will do this. Right, right. And I think that's real important. Uh, I know that you went through it pretty quick, but that's one of the things that industry and TxDOT really need to look at is that that whole table and that verbiage there, because it does going to have it's going to have an effect when we're out there uh, paving in the temperature mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. And this is some of the stuff that needs to be discussed at the pre-paved meeting. Mm -hmm. If we if we're out there paving, let's identify the temperatures spectrum that we're under and make sure that uh, that we're following that specification. All right, so we we're talking about TAC coat and adding some language about the TAC coat. So Ryan, go through our the the language that we added about TAC coats. Okay, Chuck, we uh, we stated a sentence that reads, apply the TAC coat to all surfaces that will come in contact with the subsequent HMA placement unless otherwise directed. The idea behind this is, is that uh, any contact surfaces such as longitudinal joints, um, any manholes, anything of that nature, you want to make sure you get those tacked before you, pla you place the mix. And so that's kind of what that sentence is referring to, uh, if you will. We also included another sentence uh, towards the bottom of that paragraph that states, do not dilute emulsified asphalts at the terminal, in the field, or at any other location before use. Mm -hmm. So the idea behind that is, is that if we're using an emulsion as a tack coat, we want to make sure we don't dilute it. That's right. Um, as you recall, whenever we first kind of started our conversation, uh, we, we mentioned that we removed the sampling from the very front of the specification. If you look now, this is where we actually put the sampling, is under the tack coat where it needs to be. And so basically it states that the engineer will obtain at least one sample and send it into testing to the materials and test division. We also included another sentence uh, as a separate paragraph for emulsions. The engineer may test as often as necessary to ensure the residual of the emulsion is greater than or equal to the specification requirement in item 300. The idea behind that change is that the engineer can test as much as he needs to just to make sure that we're meeting the residual requirement in item 300. Uh, also, I noticed that we're, you, or I guess you guys, removed the uh, use of a pneumatic roller to remove streaks and other irregular patterns, which again, uh, it's just cleaning up the specification. In other words, you want the, the, you want the tack coat to be shot in a uniform pattern uh, and not allow the use of a pneumatic roller to be able to remove the streak. So just cleaning that, it up. That's correct, Chuck. So the idea behind that is, is, is it's not that you can't use it, mm -hmm. it's just we're not going to require it. That's right. Right. And so um, I also wanted to go back real quickly because there was a change, another change uh, in terms of laydown operations. Mm -hmm. So we included a new table. It's table 16. Got it. Yep. Uh, this was proposed by the districts. And basically what, what this table is, is it's the placement temperatures uh, to establish 
it's the minimum placement temperature of the of the mixture delivered to the paver. And so okay. the idea behind this is, is again, uh, one reference that we've done throughout the entire specification is we identify the mix by the high binder grade, mm -hmm. so PG64, PG70, PG76, and then listed in table 16, we also have the minimum mixture placement temperature. So it's the minimum placement temperature before entering the paper. Okay, so you 64 is 260. That's correct. And we have a maximum temperature that we can produce it at 325. That's correct. And we got a 25 degree operational uh, tolerance. So we got to be real careful at what temperature we pick to be able to discharge to versus the minimum paving temperature. That's correct. That's so correct. we got to pay attention again. We need to talk about that at our pre-paved meeting. So 64 is 260, PG70 is 270, and PG76 is 280, and that's, that's the minimum. That's correct. And then we have the maximum production temperature, and then we have a 25 degree tolerance. So those need to be discussed at the pre-paved meeting mm -hmm. because again, we're really narrowing that band down mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of temperature. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay.